Dude, I mean, you don't want to sound like Alex Jones. And yet. Until you hear quotes like that. I'm spending money like I just got paid. Hundred dollar bills, tell them keep the change. Come on. Do you want to be a pawn in, in someone else's game? Or do you want to be able to stand up for truth? Hey, pop a bottle about to make it rain. Let me give you something now to celebrate. Come on. How is that not just like known everywhere as a silly thing that we fell for? And if you're wondering why I move the way I do. I just feel so good. Well, it, it's like the boy who cried wolf. We fall for it again and again and again and again. We fall into, you know. Wait, so we went to war. The original Desert Storm. Yes. Over a lie. They want people to not know the truth because those people are more easily ruled. Was the no. daughter of the the following is an episode of Ward Radio and does not represent the thoughts or the opinions of KHTS, its owners, or any of its affiliates, nor does it represent the official opinion of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. With that said, sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I am your host, Cardinalis, and today I'm joined in the studio by Connor Boyack. Hey there. Yeah, um, I don't know how to introduce you, man. You do so much. You're a prolific author. You write the Tuttle Twins, which we've all heard about. You also are in charge of, like, Libertas Institute, I believe it's called. Yeah, that's right. The Whole Nine Yards. And you just wrote a really interesting book called Mind Wars, Avoiding Deception in an Age of Manipulation. And you've spoken recently um, in some pretty well-publicized events about how to protect our children's minds um, from, frankly, those that would sequester it away from us, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I knew I had to get you in the studio here to talk about you, your books, your message, the whole nine yards. So... Um, you know, my audience, uh, they, they've seen you in a couple of live streams. They've seen you opine. I've reposted a couple of things of yours, but they haven't really had a chance to meet you and so on and so forth. So why don't you just give us a brief introduction? Sure. Uh, but this is like the fun, cool, like millennium below introduction, not like the boomer one that you give to get like donations and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So just give us a, give us a, uh, an introduction to who you are, what your organization is, and then let's talk mind wars All right. because I really do feel like that is the current battlefield right now. And I couldn't have put it better myself. So Connor Boyack, go. All right. So uh, I live in Utah. I'm from California. I'm a homeschooling dad of two. Uh, and I run an organization called Libertas Institute, uh, where we change hearts, minds, and laws across the country. So uh, we're what's called a think tank, where we sit around figuring out how do we change laws? How do we change people's opinions? How do we, how do we get them to agree to support different things? We're very libertarian. So it's very much like, let's get the government out of people's lives. Let them do what they want. Uh, but to change people's minds, a large part of that is just education. So I've written 44 books. They've sold millions of copies. Jeez. Uh, I've got a cartoon, uh, the Tuttle Twins show on Angel Studios. Uh, and so I'm just a freedom guy trying to preach the message of freedom, make it popular and, and change laws that, uh, you know, inhibit the, the freedoms that we deserve. Do you know what they do to the guys like that, bro? Oh, I do. Uh, throughout, yeah. <laughs> throughout, throughout history, we do not fare too well when we're telling the king, hey, knock it off. Yeah. Hey, babe, I just want to be like William Wallace, <laughs> right. like screaming freedom as they, uh, you know, ripped out his entrails or maybe like Guy Fox, you know, like that's, you know, like, that's like a, that's like a that's horrible a, aspiration, yeah. but a very noble one. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It, it's rewarding until they kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's funny. So, um. I just watched a YouTube video that you put out at, what was the name of the event uh, it was again? was called, the, I think, the Restore Freedom Rally in Florida that I was speaking okay, of. Okay, we got to work on these names, too, because <laughs> yeah. after, like, the Unite the Right Rally, yeah. like, we can't have these ubiquitous, I mean, you know, like, we got we to worry about those, you know? <laughs> but, like, Restore Freedom, okay, that works, you know? That, and then also, all the child armies in Africa have these very noble names, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. the, 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 people, uh, the People's Army. Liberation of, Army. Yeah, it's always, like, yeah. some kind of... Yeah. They're, they're about peace and liberation and stuff. I've almost become dubious of the term it's, liberation. It's like when Congress has a bill that they call, some. Oh, like here's a recent one, the Inflation Reduction Act, which does nothing to yeah. reduce inflation, but they always name it something fluffy to make you like it. Or the Patriot Act. Patriot you Act, know, great it's example. Like they, so anyway, um, if this rally were named the protect your children's minds rally i actually probably would be a little bit more for it but that's the topic du jour and i actually want 
to talk about it because not only is the cover of your book superb, and if you guys are listening on the radio, you can actually just Google this when you get home. The book's called Mind Wars, and the author is named Connor Boyack, and the cover is very compelling. It's a picture of a young woman looking into her phone, surrounded by other people looking into her phone, and literally this is what it looks like being on the subway, and you are intimately aware, if not just through this picture, that it is a battle for your mind and your thoughts. We live in an attention economy where the new currency is like your attention and your viewpoint, maybe even over uh, some other what would be considered 20 years ago quotidian uh, requirements. So Big word. Uh, yeah, you dig that. See, <laughs> you're rubbing off on me. It's those 44 books. You're loquacious. Oh, man, this just keeps getting better. So anyway, um, tell us, what is the mind war we're fighting? Yeah. Who do you think the participants are? How can we guard our own minds against it as well as others? I want to hear everything that you have to say, Connor, the, the floor is yours. Well, I, I first want to point out the cover of the book that you're talking about was generated by AI. And so that alone is a big issue right now where people are very fearful about how do we know what's true in a world where we're going to have all these deep fakes and all of this uh uh, video content and imagery that we don't know if it's real or not. And so I thought, hey, I want to lean into this and use AI to actually create the cover of the book. So that's all. Uh, well, 54% of the people polled said they think it's one of the biggest threats of 2024 is going to be misinformation online. And we do tons of debunkings on this channel. One of the biggest anti-Mormon TikToks that we analyzed uh, over the past six months was a guy who came up with the top 10 most racist, most perverse, most cruel Brigham Young quotes. Mm. And we started looking them up and referencing them and you know what we found out we said no this is bs these are all fake not only were they fake they had been made on chat gpt oh wow you know what i'm saying oh, wow. and, and passed off with i think at this point hundreds of thousands of views on tiktok yeah as the real deal when it was literally just utter made up garbage that's so funny and so yes keep going well, obviously there's ai that's part of the equation let, let's get into the mind war then what what does that uh, what does that mean what do i mean by it well, I'll start by saying this. I think that we will always lose a war that we don't even know is being fought, right? If you think about, are we are we on a psychological battlefield? And if you don't realize that you are, then you're already a casualty. Imagine sending your child to some far flung war in the Middle East and not uh, and the military not providing them with ammunition and armor and weaponry and knowledge of the end. Like you would like that's just unfathomable. Of course, you need those things to fight a war. Well, the contention in the book is that too many parents don't realize, number one, that these mind wars are happening uh, all around us, not only for their children, but uh, us as adults as well. Right. But that number two, they are not properly empowering their their children uh, with the resources that they need to fight in that that mind war. So who is the enemy, right? If we have a war, we're fighting against an enemy. Uh, who is that? I boil it down in the book to three different categories. So that's the propagandists, the politicians, and the pundits, the media. Sorry, no no offense. You're, oh, no, you're, you're an good, exception, bro. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's the big corporate media. Present right? company <laughs> excluded. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so the the and I like alliteration. So uh, propagandists, politicians, and and pundits. And so I, I spend a large part of the book, Mind Wars, talking about this enemy because I think too few people understand the nature. Uh, uh, of the enemy. Have you ever heard of a guy named Edward Bernays? You probably have. Do you know this guy? I, I do believe he's the inventor of American propaganda. Yes. Quoted by Hitler. Good job. Good during, job. Like Goebbels was a big student of his, right? Yes. So, so, so Goebbels had a book called Crystallizing Public Opinion, and it was basically a manual on how to do propaganda. Isn't he the guy that is famous for having coined the term, you must manufacture consent, right? Or is that somebody else? And engineering of consent is what he engineering called it. Engineering of consent. Yeah. Okay. Which, which, when you think about the Declaration of Independence, that talks about how just governments derive their power, governments derive their just powers from where the consent, the of, consent the governed, of the governed. Yeah. For consent to be engineered by people who want to manipulate what we think and do is pretty crazy. So yeah, a lot of this comes from Bernays, who, by the way, was the double nephew of Sigmund Freud by birth and by marriage. So he's got access to Uncle Sigmund, who's studying the brain, how our thoughts work, dreams, all this kind of stuff. 
And then Bernays takes that knowledge and weaponizes it first in the Committee on Public Information, which was a federal department during World War One that literally existed to propagandize the American public to support and help finance the war. So Bernays cuts his. So our federal government. Our federal government. OK. And so Bernays gets a job with the government using propaganda type tools to get people to buy, you know, war bonds or whatever, support the war. And so he comes away from World War One realizing, you know, I think the same tools that we just use in the government can be used for corporations. He launches what we now call public relations, which was really just corporate propaganda. He saw that propaganda could use uh, be used by governments, be used by corporations. One of the most famous, ex- it's why we eat uh, bacon and eggs today. I mean, literally the industry wanted to be able to get more market share. And so they hired these PR people to make it, oh, this is the healthy breakfast that you need. And suddenly we all do it. One of his most famous ones, though, was for the cigarette companies of the day. At the time, it was very unfashionable for women to smoke. And uh, oh. and, and that was half the, the market share gone because you don't have the women doing it. And so the cigarette companies hire Bernays. And at the time, parades were like a big thing. They still kind of are in New York uh, City sometimes. They had this massive parade. And at the front of the parade, Bernays hired a bunch of models to dress up as the Statue of Liberty. And they held cigarettes in the air and they called them their torches of freedom. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty, pretty good stuff, right? What? And so all these pretty ladies and all the other women want to be like them. And, oh, that's fashionable now. And that act uh, totally transformed the American perception about smoking for women. And the market share took off. And then a lot of women started smoking. So these are the type of people that we're up against as propagandists who, as you point out, Goebbels was using. What's interesting about this, Bernays was a Jew. And so here the Nazis are using his own playbook No, in Germany. And he finds out that they're using his book. And he's he said he wrote it, you know, he was horrified. Uh, but the reality is these are tools that anyone can use. You are a propagandist here yeah, with your No, but your I show. fully embrace it. So like, do I. Yeah. Okay. With, with my books. But and and so that it's it's a war of ideas. You're you're propagandizing, you're in other words, you're propagating in certain, Spanish, the word for a TV commercial is la propaganda. La propaganda. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like I just ever since I learned that, I was just like, okay, I completely if you're in marketing, you're in propaganda. So here's you the know? here's the quote from Bernays that you were thinking of. He okay. says, the engineering of consent is the very essence of the democratic process, the freedom to persuade and suggest. So he's basically saying that propaganda is just sharing ideas and that's what democracy is. But he was specifically doing it to manipulate people's minds to the point that he has this other quote that that oh, I just find fascinating. He, he, he wrote a book, by the way, called Propaganda. It is a short book. You can get it on Amazon. He wrote it in like 1910 or something like that. And it is an alarming book when you realize, holy crap, like they were doing this a century ago. Now that we got cell phones and everything and just, you know, they've only media, gotten better. It's only gotten better. Here's this quote. He says that the conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. Dude, I mean, you don't want to sound like Alex Jones. And yet. Until you (laughs) hear quotes like that and you think, Holy smoke, these are the people that convinced women they needed to smoke in the 20s just because a corporation hired a PR firm to be able to convince them that that's what to do. And you can't watch like, thank you for smoking with Aaron Eckhart and not see how, holy smoke, these people really do manufacture that consent. There really are just dark, scary, greedy individuals and corporations that don't give a crap about what's good for humanity and only what's good for their pocketbook. And they will utterly change the course of histories of entire societies societies right. in order to make an extra buck and they don't give a crap about you i i mean it, it, it i still can't believe that feminists convinced women that no being at home caring for those loved ones and you know um rearing your children and doing the thing that only women possibly can do no that's not as cool as being taxed right. and stressed out and working every day <laughs> right so hashtag girl power get out there like no more kids Boss lady. you know like yeah it's 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 i the and then, then now you've got all the Gen Z girls saying like, wait, wait, what? You're saying I can stay at home, raise cute kids and make mom TikToks? Yeah. And like that was an option that was taken from us? Wait. It could have been a trad wife and you know just what the I'm c- cooking and have an Instagram channel. You know, and then make millions, right? And so anyway, like the, the, the lies the American public has 
um, swallowed, yeah. has ingested, mm -hmm. uh, are are sometimes you you almost feel like they're so big and they're so consequential that only a godlike figure could have forced humanity to swallow them up. Sure. That you're almost embarrassed to realize that, oh my gosh, all it took was a PR firm hiring models going down uh, a parade in New York City to all of a sudden completely well, switch that culture. Here's another story, Cardin, that hits the nail on the head with what you're talking about. So uh, you think about all the carnage that's happened in the Middle East over the past two decades. Okay, right. All, all the wars. Right? Yeah, yeah. Good topic, right? right? Yeah. So, well, it's evergreen. How did like, it, it is? Yeah, it is sadly you know, evergreen. Like, but how did it all start? Right. It started with uh, Kuwait and Iraq and the Gulf War. That's how American intervention started, which precipitated so many other conflicts in the years since. And so, how did we get into that war? We got into that war because a girl named Naira testified before Congress, a congressional committee about personally witnessing Iraqi soldiers removing babies, newborn babies, from their incubators. Do you remember this story? It was, it was a no. massive... Okay, so the, there's these incubators in the hospital. This girl saw or says that she saw Iraqi soldiers remove the babies from their incubators, toss them aside to die, um, and this horrifically barbaric action that she's, through tears telling this committee. The committee, as you might imagine, is incensed. The media reports this story like crazy. Americans go wild. That's the sinking of the Lucia Tana or whatever. Exactly right. Okay. What's called a false flag in that case. And so here, this girl, Naira, has convinced uh, Congress when they vote to go to war, it passed uh, or seven I'm trying to get this right. Seven senators cited her testimony as a reason why they said, we got to go stop Saddam Hussein and these guys. They're so barbaric. Listen to what this yeah, girl said. Okay. Right? Seven senators. The vote margin in the Senate was only five votes. The problem, it was complete fabrication. This girl was the no. daughter. She was the daughter of the Kuwaiti ambassador. She was hired uh, or rather coached by a PR firm that still what? exists today, Hill and Knowlton. What? They were paid a million dollars by Citizens for a Free Kuwait, which was an entity set up by the Kuwaiti government, specifically to propagandize and deceive the American public into going to war and coming to Kuwait's rescue. Kuwait wanted the Americans to be on their side. Wait, what? Okay, how is that not just like known everywhere as a silly thing that we fell for? Well, it, it's like the boy who cried wolf. We fall for it again and again and again and again. We fall into, you know. Wait, it, so we went to war. The original Desert Storm. Yes. Over. A lie. A fake testimony from. Well, okay. It, it wasn't fake. The violence that was happening. And Correct. the the ethos of people that feel we should be our world police. But you're saying there are measurable quantifiers being the votes of the senators that proved that the testimony of this girl that ended up being false, as yeah. you say, a complete fabrication by a PR right. firm, uh -huh. is what pushed them over by a margin of two votes. Yeah, so it passed by five votes, but seven senators said that girl's it's testimony- It's like the Hunter Biden laptop story that was suppressed, right. where he wins by a thin margin, and all the exit polls show that if people would have had known about that, they wouldn't have voted for Biden. Yeah. And so simply by suppressing that story in social media, they were able to literally influence an election. Okay, here's here's where this gets interesting. So okay. Han Hannah Arendt is this author that uh, writes a lot about totalitarianism. She's a hist okay. historian who's really dug into this. And she has this quote that says that the ideal subject- for those who wish to rule, in other words, dictators and presidents and kings and so forth, their ideal subject is people for whom the distinction between fact and fiction no longer exists. And so you have these people in, in power and they want a confused citizenry. They want people to buy the lies. They want people to not know the truth because those people are more easily ruled. When the CIA, so the CIA's first uh, civilian director was Alan Dulles. And in 1953, he stands before this audience and he's talking about how the Soviets are engaged in what was called brain warfare. So he's talking about this program and he says, it's hard for us to realize that in the great area behind the Iron Curtain, a vast experiment is underway to change men's minds, working on them continuously from youth to old age. So he's, he's warning the American audience that the Soviets are engaged literally in brain warfare. They're, they're um, doing a mind war against their own people. He's, he's sounding the alarm as the CIA director. Well, what, what's the problem? 
he was not revealing to the audience that he, as the director of the CIA, was overseeing a program that dwarfed anything that the Soviets were doing. It's called Project MK Ultra. Oh, that's where it came from. That's where that's what MK Ultra is, and it was literally a CIA program to figure out how to manipulate people's minds. Like how much LSD you could give exactly. them before they started just doing what you told them. Electroshock therapy, subliminal messaging, drug uh, uh, use as well, and, and so. This is the mind where we have to realize that the politicians have a vested interest in us being a a distracted, confused electorate buying into lies. They want the deep fakes. They want us to not know what's what, because then anytime there's a video of one of them doing something awful, they can just say, oh, you know, that's not true at all. So if we're confused, we can't stand up for the truth. The 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 propagandists are the consent engineers hired by these politicians and others to influence it. And then the corporate media, they're not watchdogs, they're lapdogs in a lot of cases. So you have this this triumvirate, this this uh, unity across these three triumvirate. groups. Triumvirate. I'm loquacious like you are. That was that. <laughs> I don't even know what that word means, bro. What's it, a triumvirate? It, it's, well, you've seen uh, uh, so I married an was it so I married an axe murder the the pentavirate the the five. It just means a, a group of three. Uh, getting together. Well, now you're just embarrassing <laughs> me. The, the pentavra. I know pent means five sided. So oh what? no, it was Mike Myers doing a little skit about how it's like the new Illuminati was the pentavra, and it was. I'm like just the- gonna have to edit this part out where I sound like an idiot, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. I'm just a radio host, it's, bro. It's all good. So anyway, no, fi- finish. What okay, you're so thinking, man. so so the point is that we are in a mind war where there are powerful people who want to manipulate us, as Bernays said. They believe that that is how you manufacture consent. That is how uh, you have the true ruling power of government. So the question for parents, for all of us, is do you want to be a pawn in in someone else's game or do you want to be able to stand up for truth? Do you want to know what is actually true? How do we sift through the garbage and the propaganda? How do we identify who the truth tellers are? And so that's kind of the stuff that we get into the uh, in the book because like any muscle you have to it gets bigger over time as you use it. A lot of people their their truth uh, observing muscles their their discernment has atrophied and people don't really know how to not be propagandized. Like you say you know, with Naira and Lusitani and all these things, we continue to buy into this stuff over and over again. How do we, like the villagers, realize that the boy is crying wolf is lying so that we stop listening to him and stop being manipulated? So the goal of the book is kind of the wake up uh, warning call to say, here's what's happening. Here's who these people are. They're the enemy. Here's how they work. And therefore, here's how you and your kids can kind of avoid their control so that you can be able to stand up for truth and uh, and not be have your consent be engineered by others. Dude, this is too awesome. The name of the book is Mind Wars, Avoiding Deception in an Age of Manipulation. Uh, I am stoked out of my mind to actually, you know what? We're just going to have to talk about the how on the other side of this commercial break. Unfortunately, we're going to have to go here in a second. But on the other half of this commercial great break, I actually want to get into some of the hows. Do you have specifics oh, yeah. on how yeah. parents can? Okay, that's what we're going to talk about on the other side of this break. Uh, his name is Connor Boyack. He's the author of the Tuttle Twins, if you guys are into homeschooling. Or if, I don't know, you like children's literature in general, right? You know what I'm saying? However, it's amazing how many of my adult friends talk about, whoa, I can't believe what I just learned in this Tuttle Twins book. I think you're Trojan horsing constitutional thought exactly through right. through like children's literature exactly and it's kind of it. funny. Yep. It's like when you learn about geography from Dora the Explorer and you don't want to admit <laughs> it. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, you're a prolific author and I absolutely love everything you're putting out and I want to know how to defend my own mind and that of my children against these very pernicious actors that... Um, really seem to be only becoming more embarrassingly or uh, in a scary way effective. So anyways, name's Connor Boyack. The book is called Mind Wars. For this and more, please check us out on wardradio.com. We will be back in a minute. Guys, thanks for watching the video. Before you go, please make sure that you like the video, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please let this be the video in which we earn your subscription and that you press the alert button so you're alerted to all of our fun live streams and standalone videos and community posts. Also, if you'd like to help us out, please consider joining the channel. Members get all kinds of cool perks and benefits. They get early access to a lot of our videos and special emoticons and emojis during our live streams and preferential treatment there. It's a lot 
lot of fun. Speaking of a lot of fun, we have a super cool Discord. If you'd like to join our Discord, check us out on wardradio.com. There's a link to the Discord there. Also, you can sign up there for our newsletter. Our newsletter is a lot of fun, and you can put your email address in there. And if you'd like to contribute to the program, please consider looking us up on Venmo or on the Cash app. We're on both of those platforms. Also, if you just want to keep watching more content right about here, and probably right about here, are going to be some more videos. Please check those out. And as always, for this and more, please make sure that you look us up and check us out at wardradio.com.